Hello and welcome to Radicals 1.4, Identifying Graphs. Okay, today we are going to do a problem that you guys have seen for the past two quarters. And it's basically creating equations based on the picture of a graph. And we're going to do this every single time we get a new function that we, we basically... Yeah, we, if, you, if you don't notice the pattern, right? we, we learn a new function. Then we teach you how to solve with it. We teach you how to manipulate it. We teach you guys how to make equations. And we teach you guys how to graph it. Yeah, I think those are the basic things that we teach you how to do. So we're at that point in time where we, we are starting radicals or square root type graphs. And we're going to learn how to make the equation by looking at a picture. So that's what today's lesson is all about. All right, so let's go for it. And oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even talk about this slide. Okay, so this slide is basically your, your map. Yeah, your guide as far as uh, where you're going to put your numbers that you find for the letters A, C, H, and K. And if you're wondering why does A, C, H, and K look familiar, well, they're the exact same letters that we just found when we did transformations in the previous lesson. Okay, so we're just going to go to reverse, right? Usually we take apart an equation to find A, C, H, and K, but this time we're going to be taking apart a graph to find what the A, C, H, and K are. And once we find those numbers, we're going to put them in those spaces, and we're pretty much done. Okay, so let's let me teach you guys how to tear apart a graph. Okay, so the first thing is uh, when you look at a radical graph, yeah, a radical function graph, it's gonna it's gonna take on one of four forms, where you're gonna have your dot, which I guess you can call your vertex, and it's gonna be going up to the right, or you have your vertex and it's gonna be going down to the right, or you have your vertex dot and it's gonna be going up to the left and your vertex dot going down to the left. And the thing you want to make sure you start to understand is based on which one of these four graphs you have, it's going to tell you about the sign of your A and C values. So up to the right means A and C are both positive. Up to the left, A is positive, but C is negative. Okay. Down to the right, A is negative, C is positive. And down to the left, both are negative. A and C are both negative. Okay, so if you want to start looking for patterns, right, if your graph is going up, whether it's up right or up left, your A is positive. If your graph is going down left, down right, your A is negative. Okay, so A on the top and the bottom, plus or minus. Okay, and then your C value. Notice how your C value goes to the right. C value goes to the right, and they're both C value positive. Okay, and your C value is going to the left, Right? They're all both C value is negative. So if, if anything, you need to make sure you, you refer back to this particular page in your handout or this particular slide in this video because it's going to tell you information about the, the value of the sign, yeah? the, the sign of the A and the C. And that's kind of important. Okay, So yeah, let's remember this slide a lot. All right. And as far as how to find the H and K, or information about the H and K, well, it's basically your vertex, right? So if you if you remember back to the quadratic function when we did vertex for him, right? I taught you guys that the coordinate H comma K is known as your vertex, and that's going to carry over into this shape as well, okay? So that dot that I showed you earlier, where the graph starts basically is called your vertex, and when you find that coordinate, it's going to be your H and K, all right? Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's look at number one. And your vertex is right here. Your vertex is this dot right here. And let me see. Let me write vertex somewhere on this graph. Vertex. And that's this dot right here. Yeah, and that coordinate is, let's see, that coordinate is at negative 4, comma, 3. So we just found our h and k. So h is negative 4, and k is 3. So let's Let's, let's put those in those blanks. I'm going to change the color because I know I, I wrote my outline in blue. Let me change my color to something else. So I'm going to put negative 3, I'm sorry, negative 4 rather for H, and positive 3 for K. Okay, all right, so let's continue. And oh, we can also figure out that this graph is going down to the right. So down means your A value is negative, and if you're wondering, how do I know that? Well, look back at that slide that I showed you the picture of the four different types of radical graphs you're going to get, right? And that, that picture, that slide that has the four types of, um, I guess, directions that your graph is going to head in, that's going to tell you that since it's going down to the right, 
your A value is negative, but your C value is positive. Okay, so just based on this, this first preliminary look, I can get all this information about the, the A and the C, and by looking at the coordinate of my vertex, I can get the actual numbers for H and K. So all I have to do is figure out uh, what is my number for A and what is my number for C. And once I do that, I'm done. Okay, so let's go after the A first. Okay, so here's what you want to do when you go after A. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go in one direction or another. Okay, you're going to, you're going to start at your vertex dot and you're going to go one unit, which in this case is one box. It's not always going to be one box, so be careful, but you're going to go one unit either to the left or one unit to the right. And we're going to go one unit to the right this time. And the reason why is this, because your graph is headed in that exact same direction. Okay, so whichever, whichever direction your graph is headed in, that's the direction you're going to go one unit to the right, one unit of. Okay, so since my graph is going to the right, I'm going to go one unit to the right also, or one box. And after I go one unit to the right, I'm going to go up or down, and like, like I said again, I'm going to follow my direction of my graph. So since my graph went down, I'm also going to go down. So I'm going to draw this red line down until I hit my graph. And then I'm going to answer this simple question. How many units did I just travel before I hit my well, my graph, right? So when I went one to the right, then I started going down. How many units did it take for me to hit my graph or make contact with my curve? And that answer is two. Okay, it took me two units or two boxes before I reached and made contact with my graph. And knowing that I have just found my value of A, so it's gonna be a, a two in that spot. Okay, and it kind of matches, right? Because this is negative A, right? And then I went down. Because when I went right, one, I had to go down two units, which corresponds to that negative sign for A. And I had to go down two units, so I put a two for my number of A. Okay? All right, and then as far as C is concerned, uh, the Algebra 2 teachers, when we first started doing this section and started creating it, we, be, we decided to be nice. Okay? Um, only in Algebra 2 for this class. This is going to happen. Once you finish Algebra 2 in this class, um, it's it's free game. We can do whatever number we want. Okay, But for now, we're going to keep it easy. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take it easy on you, and we're going to say, okay, your C value is always going to be positive 1 or negative 1. Okay, So since, since I already have the positive sign, I know it's going to be a 1 right here. And I found my C. But like I said, this is only for Algebra 2 in this class. right? Like I said, our teachers, we got together, we decided to be nice, and we said, we're always going to make the C value either positive 1 or negative 1. We're not going to get fancy and make the C value like positive 2, negative 2, negative 3, positive 5. We're not going to make all those strange numbers. We're just going to keep it either positive 1 or negative 1. Okay? So, there you go. That's, that's how you fill in these four blanks. So let's just clean up this equation because there's something I kind of want to fix. Okay? And when you write your final answer, you're just going to rewrite this as f of x equals negative 2 on the outside, square root of. And you can write the 1 if you don't if you want to. You don't have to, but I'm just going to write it anyway because then it helps me to identify where my c is. So I'm just going to put a 1, parentheses, x, and I'm going to change negative, negative into positive. Then put a 4, close my parentheses, then put positive 3, and then I'm done. Okay, so all I did was I changed that negative negative into a positive sign, and I changed, I just got rid of that plus sign in front of the one, okay? So, you can leave your answer either way. For me, it doesn't matter. You can leave your answer the top way, you can leave your answer the bottom way. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with both options, okay? But, that's just me though, okay? So if you're from another class and you're watching this video, you may want to ask your own teacher what they prefer. Do they want, will they let you leave the answer exactly how it is on this line with the negative negative? Or do they want you to change it into what I have before on the bottom? So you got to ask your teacher what they prefer. Okay. All right. So let's go on to number two. Okay. So first thing I want to do is I want to find my vertex. So my vertex is that dot and he's at a coordinate of three comma two. Okay. So he's at a coordinate of 3, 2, so I'm going to put a, a positive 3 in this first blank. Oops, I don't want to do blue because my, my outline is written in blue. Let me change it to another color. Okay, so this is going to be a positive 3, and you're wondering why are you writing a positive sign when you could just perfectly write, you could just write 3, 
right? And that's just habit of mine because whenever I do transformations and I identify what my H is, I always put positive three because then it reminds me I'm gonna go right three times, yeah? And then the K value positive two. So you don't have to write the positive sign for the three if you don't want to, but I prefer it, okay? All right, so since my graph is going down, that means my A value is negative. And since my graph is going to the left, my C value is also negative. And since I told you earlier in the previous problem that for Algebra 2 and Algebra 2 only in this class, we're only going to give you two options for your C value. It's either going to be negative 1 or positive 1. Okay, in this particular case, we are doing negative 1. Okay, all right, so now let's find the H. So here's how you do this, right? Remember I told you we're going to go either one unit to the right or one unit to the left, and we want to follow the same direction the graph is going. So since my graph is going to the left, I'm going to also go one unit to the left. Okay, and then once I'm there, I'm going to go either up or down, and once again, I'm going to follow the same direction that my graph is going. So since my graph is going down, I'm going to go down. And then I ask myself, how many units did it take for me to make contact with my graph? Okay. And here's where it's going to be like, whoa, okay, are you, are you going to get cute with this number and say, ooh, this looks like five eighths, or this could be one half, or this could be three eighths. Okay. Here's what we're going to promise you guys. We're not going to make weird numbers. At the worst, we're going to make it go down half a unit at the worst. Okay. We're not going to, we're not going to say, ooh, this is a one third, or this is three fourths or this is five eighths, okay? At the worst, when you go up or down to reach and make contact with your graph, it's gonna be at the worst, one half. We're not gonna use any other type of fractions. Maybe like um, one and one half or two and one half, but not like two and one thirds, two and one fourth, three and three fourths. We're not gonna do those kind of numbers, okay? So since I went down half a unit to get to my graph, well, that's the number I put right in this blank for A, one half, okay? So uh, let's rewrite this equation. There's not much that has to be changed, but um, let's just rewrite it anyway. Yeah, so you're gonna write f of x. You're not gonna see that many changes. You're still gonna have the negative one half, and you're gonna have the square root symbol, and you're gonna have your negative sign. Okay, and then you don't have to put the one if you don't want to, but the negative sign, you absolutely have to put that. And then x minus three, and then plus two. So make sure you put that plus two outside the square root symbol. If this square root symbol line goes over the two for some reason, then that is not your K value anymore. Okay, so make sure your positive two is not underneath the square root symbol. Okay, so let me just do this. Let me just erase the extra part that I have here so that there's no chance it's gonna be mistaken for being underneath that square root symbol. Okay, all right, so that's number two. Let's go on to number three. So, uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, on your handouts, I don't think these dots and these arrows are on your handouts, okay? So what you might want to get used to is how do you find which side is your dot and which side is your arrow, okay? Because if these dots and arrows are not in your graph, then you got to actually put them put them there yourself. So just, just start to get familiar with the curve of the graph and the feel and look of the graph where you're going to see that it's going up faster in the beginning and then it kind of doesn't go up as fast anymore okay so once you start to get the idea of the the four pictures that i showed you guys on that earlier slide then you guys can start remembering okay the dot goes here arrow goes on that side okay all right so this vertex let's let's take a look at this guy uh this guy is at a location of negative four and Oh, I'm sorry, not negative four, negative five. My eyes are getting bad, sorry about that. Okay, so negative five comma negative four. Okay, that looks better. All right, so my H value is negative five, so I can put a negative five in that spot. My K value is negative four, so I put a negative four in that spot. And then my graph is going up, so that's why A is positive. My graph is going to the right, that's why my C is positive. Okay. And I know that my C is going to be a 1 over here because, like I told you guys, right, you're always going to have either a positive 1 or a negative 1 for C. Okay. All right, so let's go and find my A value. So I'm going to either go left one unit or right one unit, and I'm going to follow the same direction my graph is going. So since my graph is going to the right, I go one unit to the right. And then I go up 
to, to make contact with my graph. So go up as many units as it takes to make contact with your graph. And I counted three units. One, two, three boxes. That's three units. So I put a three for my number of A. Okay. So almost done. Just got to clean up this equation. Let's just write it in a little bit uh, different looking form. So I'm going to write f of x equals 3 plus or minus. And you don't really have to have that 1 there or the plus sign there. So you can just go like this, x plus 5 and then minus 4. So your minus minus change to a positive. Okay, and like I said earlier, okay, for my students, you don't have to write this equation in blue. You can leave it just like I have on the line here. And that's perfectly fine with me. Okay. If you want to make it the, the way on the bottom, you can do that if you want, yeah? but I'm not going to require it. Either form is fine with me. Okay. All right, let's go on to our last problem. So what do we have? Vertex is at, what is his location? Let's see, it's at 2, comma, negative 5. Okay, so let's, let's start writing stuff in. Get my red pen. So I'm going to put a positive 2 for H. I'm going to put a negative 5 for K. And since it's going up, I'm going to put a positive A. Since it's going to the left, I'm going to put a negative C. And I'm going to put a 1 right after that negative sign for C. Okay? Then I'm going to find my A value. So I'm going to go left one unit. And I think I went too far, so let me redraw that line. So left one unit. Then I'm going to go up until I hit my line. And I'm going to see how many boxes or units it took for me to make contact with my graph. So. There I go, I just hit my line. So how many units did that take me to get and hit that line? Well, it looks like it's one and a half. And I told you guys, right? We're not going to get cute with the numbers. And we're not going to make it all fancy and say, ooh, that looks like one and five eighths. No, we're not going to do that. At the worst, we're going to use one half as our fraction. So don't worry about that kind of stuff. Okay? Maybe next year when you guys are in trig or maybe when you're in ALS3, those teachers might be evil and they might do that to you guys. Okay? All right, so let's let's write out my final answer. And you're going to see some changes that you don't have to do if you don't want to, but I'm just going to show you guys that these options do exist if you want to rewrite these numbers in another way. So 1 and 1 half, you can rewrite that as 3 over 2. And then square root. And then the negative sign, we definitely have to write. The 1, we don't have to write. And then we're going to go x minus 2. We don't have to write that plus sign if you don't want to. And then minus 5 on the side. Okay? All right, so that's it for today's lesson. Uh, good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. Uh, this, this lesson, like before, it's just all about uh, tearing apart a graph and dissecting it so you can find the information that you need to grab and plug in those numbers, okay? So it's just about repetition. So watch this video as many times as you need, and it should start making sense. But if not, I will see you in class, and you can ask questions. Bye-bye.